All right. So those are the last parts of the questions there. Um, I guess in general, um, it doesn't look like we're quite ready yet, maybe. Um, does anybody have any questions about any of those? Maybe not necessarily these, but I'll scroll back up to the top again here and let me know if there's any questions. Okay, questions anyone? Can I scroll it uh, again or no? Are you still checking? Okay. Good. Okay, good. Yes, no questions? Okay, um, I'll scroll back up here a little bit and uh, again, just let me know if there's any questions, anyone? There's a little bit of this. I forgot to, I got to record some stuff here. So uh, there's some more stuff there. Okay. All right. Anything there, anybody? No? And then I guess there as well. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Well, if there are no questions, we're going to move on here. Um, okay. Let me just get another screen up here. Uh, you guys are going to talk uh, again a little bit about mass by volume concentration. You can see there it says molar concentration. Uh, concentration of individual ions. Actually, I never noticed that last class, but we're not actually doing that today. That's a separate lesson. So we'll worry about that some other day. Uh, probably, I think it's tomorrow. Uh, but we're going to start by mass by volume. It's exactly like it sounds. Uh, we're going to take a mass and we're going to put it into a specific volume of water. Okay. Now, there's three kind of givens or kind of three standards here or three ways of representing, uh, which are just kind of shortcuts. You know, instead of saying, uh, I can't even think about something right now, but uh, uh, basically these are three kind of shortcuts that they use or that you'll hear on the news and things like that sometimes. Uh, and they're right here. Okay, these are the important ones right here. So anytime you get something that talks about percent right here, percent, okay, uh, percent is equivalent to grams out of 100 milliliters. Okay, that's the units that kind of mean percent. So if I said, hey, uh, we have, uh, you know, it's kind of like on a test. If I had 70%, there'd be 70 out of 100 kind of thing. Okay, PPT is the next one here. That means parts per thousand. And you'll notice we're going to focus just on the milliliters and just on these ones here. Uh, I'm not saying that this isn't useful, it is, but if we can remember that percent is out of 100 milliliters, uh, PPT is out of parts per thousand is out of 1,000 milliliters, and if we kind of keep this consistent, PPM is parts per million or grams out of a million milliliters. Uh, so as long as we can kind of keep that consistent, we will not kind of mess up on those units, okay? Yes, this is the same thing, but let's not worry about that for right now. We're going to stick to kind of this part right here and make sure that we have that part kind of dialed in there. Okay, so again, percent is out of 100 parts per thousand out of 1,000 milliliters and PPM parts per million out of a million milliliters. Okay, and uh, all it is is, like I said, a mass by volume concentration. So if we had a 12% solution, 12%, 12% mean implies basically we're going to have 12 grams in 100 milliliters of water. Basically, that's what we're going to use for all these questions. Uh, we're going to pretend that we're going to put it into water. Okay. And again, most of the, uh, like I said before, we're going to talk about aqueous solutions. Really, that's what this whole unit is. That's where water is a solution. It's 12 grams, and we're going to take 12 grams of salt, put it into 100 milliliters of solution, in this case, water. Okay. And that's going to give me a 12% solution, 12 grams out of 100. The questions look a little something like this here. And really, all these are is just comparison questions. So you guys can write these down along with me here. We're going to have 3.85 grams, it says, Sam. 
measures out 3.85 grams and puts it into 750 milliliters of solution. Okay, um, so that's what's going to take place there. 3.85 grams into 750. They want you to calculate the percent concentration. And all we're going to do is set up an equivalent fraction here. And basically what they're saying is, how many grams would I put into 100? How many grams would I put into 100 to make the same concentration as 3.85 grams of sugar? Or, yeah, sugar into 750. So Kylie might decide, hey, I'm going to take 3.85 grams of sugar, put it into 750 milliliters. Robbie's like, that's way too much. How much would I do? How much would I put into 100 to kind of keep it the same concentration? So that, you know, if you tasted either one, it would taste exactly the same. Okay. Um, and that's all we're doing here. Now, you know, as, I, as well as I do, I like to cross multiply and solve. You guys can do whatever you want. You can multiply both sides by 100 if you want. So I'll just show you that real quick here. 100, right? That'll get rid of that. And multiply this side by 100 as well. Okay. So you can do that if you want. Uh, as I've told you before, I kind of like, uh, I'm a big fan of cross multiplication uh, because I just am. So this was 100. I do a little cross multiplication. Okay, however you want to do this right now, it's up to you, but you need to solve for x. Uh, that's the important part there. So I'm going to go, what, 750 times x. I'll include the units on this one anyway, times x. And what is that? 3.85 grams into a hun and in, in 100 milliliters. So I'm just basically taking this times this, and then this times this. Okay. Um, I like this system. I like cross multiplying. I'm a big fan of it because, again, I've told you before, everything comes to the top, you know, especially those of you that, that struggle with the math portion in Unit 2, you know who you are. Uh, when I said P1, V1, T1, P2, V2, T2, and we took P1, V1, T2 was the first thing we did, and then we took the uh, T2, or sorry, T1 and P2, V2, and you wrote that all in a line. That's kind of what we're doing here. We're going to write this out in a line. And then divide by 750, of course, milliliters, and divide by 750 milliliters, okay? Um, X, we're going to multiply that out. I kind of forget what the answer is, to be honest, so I'm going to have to do that again. Uh, 100 and divide it by, what is it, 750? Uh, yeah, 0 0.513, and that is repeating, and that would be grams, okay? Uh, again, three sig three significant digits in my question. So I want to have three in my answer, yes? So that's an acceptable answer right there. I would, if actually that's probably not an acceptable answer because the 513 shouldn't have that line above it. Um, so that's an acceptable answer for this question because it's 0.513 grams is how much I'd want to put into 100 just to make the same concentration. You might see as an option, uh, this as an answer, 513 grams out of 100 milliliters. So you might see that. You can write that down as well. That says 100 milliliters there. Sorry, it's a little bit messy. And the other option, so that might be a multiple choice kind of question, just so you know, 0.513 grams in 100 milliliters. Or um, you might actually see this, 513%. Okay. And uh, percent, remember, means this, grams out of 100. Okay, so they might say calculate the percent concentration. Probably your last answer here is probably the best one because it is 0.513%. Okay, that's the answer to that. Percent means grams out of 100. We don't need to move the decimals anywhere. This is my answer. This is 0.513 grams in 100. That's what it is. Um, we're not moving the decimal. I know some people see the percent sign and want to move the decimal two places to the left. Don't do that. Okay, percent means grams out of 100 milliliters. That's what it means. Okay, all right. Any questions on that one, anyone? Okay, we're going to kind of do uh, similar questions here, but this one here says we've got 3.20 grams, and we're going to put that into 15 liters of water. Okay, what is the concentration in PPT? PPT. Again, I would start here. What is the concentration in PPT? PPT means this. Uh, Grams per thousand milliliters. That's what PPT stands for. That again goes up to this part right here. And we talked about this red part here, PPT. PPT, parts per thousand, grams out of a thousand. Okay. 
So when I get to this part here, it says, what's the concentration of PPT? Uh, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that right there. I'm looking for X. I'm going to do a little cross multiplication because that's what I do. You do whatever you want to do uh, as long as you get the right answer. And uh, 15 times X. And I'm going to do a little 3.20 grams times 1,000. Oh, sorry. No, I'm not. I lied. This is what happens. Um, now, can I do this question? I guess uh, obviously not. Yes. Uh, the units have to match, right? Um, so I'm going to actually get rid of this here. I apologize. But you might want to just rewrite that. I can't do 15 liters times 1,000 milliliters. So yeah, I'm going to change this to liters probably. The other option was I could have changed that 15 liters to milliliters as long as the units match, right? That's the important part here. So I'm going to put here a liter, sorry, one liter, okay? Uh, and that was this part, this times that part there. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply that, or sorry, divide by 15, I guess. Liters and divide by 15 liters. And X is going to be... Uh, yeah, 0 0.213. I'm going to go with three significant digits, three, three. So I'm going to go with three. And this is grams out of 1,000 milliliters. So you might see out of 1,000 milliliters, like so. Uh, you could also say grams out of one liter would be acceptable as well. Or in this case, what's the concentration in PPT? It would be 0 0.213 PPT. Okay, so that would be another way to write that as well. Okay, probably the last one is probably your best option in this case. Again, all PPT means is grams out of 1,000. Okay, that's all it means. We're not moving decimals or any of this is the answer. We're just going to do that. Okay, is that good? Questions, anyone so far? And like I said, that's what we're kind of doing on these next ones here. Okay, all right. Let's go up to this one here. Uh, again, uh, first thing I see is kind of 1.86%. These are all good indications that I'm going to be looking at 1.86% grams out of 100 milliliters. Okay, like so. All right. Then, okay, 1.86%, um, 1.86 grams out of 100. And I'm going to put my 750 down here because I want to keep the units the same. And they're saying, what mass would I need to be found in 750? So this one's kind of just the opposite. They gave us the percentage, 1.86 grams in 100. That's what it means. How much would I put in 750? So kind of back to the original question. If uh, Kylie and Robbie were doing this question, you know, one of them would make 1.86 grams in 100. How much should I put into 750 to make the same kind of uh, potassium nitrate solution. Cross multiply and solve. Uh, that's what I do. I'm just going to kind of shortcut this a little bit here. 1.86 and 750. Okay. Divide by 100. Divide by 100. And X is going to be in this case here. Oh, I forget again. Uh, 1.86. Thirteen point nine five. Yeah. 13.95 grams. I'll look at significant digits. I have three. So uh, if I have three, I got to go to 14.0. Okay. And that would be my final answer there. There's no uh, special units with this because uh, this is not like out of a hundred or out of a thousand or out of a million. Those are the ones that we have special kind of abbreviations for percent PPT, PPM. This is just out of 750. So I guess this would be your option, or I guess you might have this option as well, okay? If I was going to do 14 grams and 750, I guess that's an option. That's probably not a likely option, to be honest. Um, probably not likely, okay? All right. Good. Questions, anyone? Yes, no? Just yell it out if you do, because I can't uh, see everybody. So, all right, let's go to the last one here. Um, 2.15 grams in 100. So they're telling you uh, 2.15 grams in 100. Let me write that down. Now, they could have just as easily said in this case here, and, and the reason this question is written like that is because they could have just as easily said, 
hey, you know what? Instead of saying 2.5 grams in 100, maybe I just say percent here. Not, I just got to move it down here. Maybe they just say percent. It could have been that it's just as easily, okay? Uh, right there. Just sorry, it's a little laggy here, so it just popped up there, but um, it's a, yeah, so they could have said that. They chose not to, that's fine. 2.15 grams out of 100 is the same as 2.15%. Uh, up to you, up to them, kind of how they wanted to do that or whatever, but that's what they chose. Um, now it says, what volume, how much water would I need if I wanted to use 25 grams of magnesium chloride? Okay. And again, uh, this is where we have to be a little bit careful here. And this is why I think cross multiplication is the way to go. Again, I can't make you do that. I'm not going to make you do that. You do what works for you. But when you go to solve for B, B is on the bottom. So remember, this is like solving for T1 or T2 in last unit. It's on the bottom. So if you just, if you just kind of, uh, oh, I'm going to, you know, uh, I'll do this here. I'm going to divide by 25 here. Don't do this. Boom, boom, and divide by 25 here. Uh, and then I do this calculation. You haven't solved for V. You've solved for 1 over V. Uh, that's not good. Okay, you've just solved for the reciprocal of what you want. So again, you know, we can't do that. Um, I would suggest, you know, like I said, I'm a big fan of cross multiplication. You do whatever you do, but I would probably go 2.15 times V. And 100 times 25. Okay, uh, divide by 2.15. Divide by 2.15. Uh, v is a work so to be. Uh, what is it now? 12. Oh, I forget. Uh, oopsies. 100 times 25 divided by 2.15. Uh, yeah, 1162.79. This would be measured in milliliters because this is milliliters here. Milliliters here. Milliliters here. Yeah. So milliliters, 1162.79, significant digit wise, three significant digits. So I guess we'd have to go to what? 1.16 times 10 to the three milliliters. Okay, would be an option. That's a 10 to the three, by the way. I know it's a little messy. Um, it doesn't say you have to record your answer in milliliters. So the other option would be, you could say 1.16 liters. Okay, either one of those is perfectly fine. Maybe in the question it'll say record your answer in liters or keep it in milliliters or whatever. But either one of those would be exactly the same, just based on milliliters to liters. Yeah, a thousand kind of thing. Okay. Is that uh, good? Uh, questions, anyone? Questions? Yes, no? What kind of drink you got there today, Kylie? Oh, I like smoothies. I don't ever get anything. Actually, not true. I just uh, I was telling the other class, I got a care package yesterday from the ladies in the office, and it had a bag of chips in there, um, and the chips have gone missing since then. I don't know. Where, I'm not sure where they are. Um, and there's some other stuff in there too, but I didn't really look. There's hand lotion and Pellegrini's and stuff like that. So, I don't know. All right. Good, questions anyone? All right, uh, now we're gonna look at something called molar concentration. And as you can see here, it basically says this, um, different types of solutes will have different molar masses. So this is gonna be a little bit more specific for every compound that we talk about here. And this is why this is probably, most of the time we're gonna be using this formula here, okay? Um, you might have the same mass by volume concentration. So you might have a 12% salt solution. You might have a 12% sugar solution. They're going to taste very, very different. They're very, very different solutions, of course. Um, so they both have the same concentration, but it's not very specific to the type of compound we're talking about. So uh, to kind of be a little bit more specific, we bring in the molar mass, which we know is specific for every compound. So we have this formula here, which is called, it says here, the molar concentration of a solution is used to compare the amount of a solute to the total, the vo total volume of the solution. It's measured in moles per liter. So we know from before, 
N is always the amount. And we know that that's measured in moles. Okay, that's not going to change. I would equate this formula here. Okay. Um, so I would say this formula here is kind of like PV equals NRT in unit two. Okay. All right. V is going to be the volume. And that's measured in liters. And that's where we get the moles per liter from. Okay. Moles per liter. All right. C has uh, many different kinds of names to it. Mostly we call it the molar concentration. Molar concentration. And we measure that in moles per liter. Okay. Um, it's not always called the molar concentration. Quite often in class, uh, we will call it molar is another abbreviation for that. So sometimes you'll just hear the term molar. Okay, so you might want to write that down as well. For example, I have a five molar solution of zinc nitrate or something like that. So molar. And if we're talking about acids, they refer to molarity. Okay, polarity. So there'll be a, this, this acid has a five, five whatever molarity or something like that. Okay. Sometimes they talk about actually percentages in this case as well, okay, which is, we're not going to get into that, but that's what it's called. Okay. Now with this formula, of course, we see the N there. N is also equal to this, of course. So again, we are going to use this, um, uh, mass and molar mass uh, as always. Okay, so that might become part of the question as well. And we already have used that quite often. That's a form we're going to use for obviously the entire year here. So, okay, so we're going to get into this first example here. This first example says this calculate the concentration moles per liter. So, right away when I see that, I'm thinking N divided by V. Okay, uh, we go through the question. And I say, hey, that's N, that's my amount. So I'm going to put that in there, 1.3 moles. Um, and there's my volume right there. That's 1,375 milliliters or 1.375 liters. Remember that has to be in liters, has to be liters. And just like in uh, the lab, okay, uh, we have to make sure we're using specific units uh, for those, okay. Uh, when I divide those two, the molar concentration is 0 0.94545 moles per liter or 0 0.95 moles per liter. Okay, 0 0.95 moles per liter. All right. Uh, and that's it, two significant digits because we have two here. And of course, we got four there, but two there, so we go with two, 0 0.95. Okay. Any questions? That's pretty straightforward one to start with. Uh, again, C equals N over V, uh, and N is the amount, V is the vo volume. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to move it up here. Uh, let's look at this one here. So, in this case, we got some magnesium bromide, so we'll talk about that. There's my mass there, and there's my volume, as I already have here, volume. Okay. Calculate the molar concentration of this solution. So again, I'd say, okay, C equals N over V, molar concentration. N, I don't know N. N is not this. I just put down the M there. That's the mass right there. So I'm going to have a little extra work here. I'm going to have to put 37.5 grams, right? Ma uh, sorry, uh, mass over molar mass, of course, is what I'm doing there. A little M over big M. Magnesium bromide is my compound. So that looks a little something like this here. I'll just put it down at the bottom here. Um, let's see, that's uh, 24.31. Oops. Uh, oopsies. Times 2 plus 24. 184.11 grams per mole. And dividing those two, oops, 37.5 uh, divided by 184.11, 0.2036. Uh, 
that's moles there. I'm not sure why that's not writing there. 0.2036 moles. I'm going to put that over to here. 2036 moles. And 350 milliliters or 0.350 liters. Okay. And I'm going to divide those two, of course. And I should get a final answer 0 0.582 moles per liter. Okay. Is that good? Okay. So that one just to have to do a little bit of mass and molar mass, of course. Again, we really have six, well, we kind of have five variables, I guess. We have C equals N over B. And then, of course, with this, we have the mass and the molar mass as well. So using these ones here, we actually technically have about five variables that we're going to be looking for. We could look for any of them. We could look for the molar mass. We could look for mass. We could look for molar concentration, C. We could look for the volume, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, last question here, and then we're almost done. Uh, calculate the volume. So I'm looking for the volume. There's a mass there. And again, I know that that is C because I look and the units are moles per liter. Yes. And by the way, I also know that, and I can probably find my molar mass from there. Okay. So it says calculate the volume, molar concentration. So I'm like, hey, there's moles per liter. I'm going to write out this formula. I need to find the volume. So to find the volume, I'd multiply this by V and this by V. And I get VC. Oopsies. Come on. I get VC equals N. By the way, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a pretty common uh, thing that we're going to do here. We There's a lot of times where we have to find the amount of something, the moles. So we're going to be doing N equals C times V a lot. Okay, a lot. So N equals C times V. Um, and I want to get V by itself, so divide by C and divide by C. Okay. And some people are going to be like, can we just do this or this or whatever? I don't know. Uh, it depends, I guess, on what your rationale is for uh, doing that. Um, can you do that? I, uh, as long as I guess you get V over A equals N over C, sure. Okay. Um, C's got to go on the bottom. Well, that's 1.8 times 10 to the negative 2 moles per liter. Okay. I'm going to put brackets around that. I'll explain that in a second. And I still need to find N. So N equals, of course, mass over molar mass. Uh, I get 0.350 grams, and I'm going to divide that by the molar mass of calcium sulfide. Calcium sulfide looks like this. Calcium's a 2 plus, sulfide's a 2 minus. Swap, drop, and reduce, don't forget, um, should give me about 72.15. Okay, I'm not sure why it's not letting me right over there. But 0.350 divided by 72.15. And I'm going to get about 0 0.004 moles. And that's going to go here. 0, 0, 004, it's 85, blah, 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 moles. Okay. And uh, again, we're going to get uh, moles and moles will cancel, of course. And we're going to get 1 over 1 over liters, which is liters, which is the answer here. Remember, the volume in this particular case has to be in liters uh, because we're using moles and moles per liter, so we cancel those two. When you divide these two, you have to use brackets. Notice I put this whole thing in brackets here because this whole number is what we need to divide by. Um, if we don't do that, okay, sorry, I'm just trying to, there we go. If we don't do that, um, what's going to happen here is um, we are going to not get the right answer because we're going to divide by 1.8 and then multiply that answer by 10 to negative 2. So we talked about last, you know, last day, either put in 1 times 10 to negative 2 in brackets or um, use the E function again, whichever you would wish to do, but uh, make sure that you uh, do that properly. Okay, and all said and done, you can check this out on your own. Uh, you're going to get 0 0.27 liters. Okay, should be your final answer in this case. We can only have two significant digits because 1.8 is 2. Okay. Is that good? Okay, questions anyone so far? 
Again, you might be solving for the mass, you might be solving for the molar mass, you might be solving for C or V, it all depends. Questions, anyone? Yes, no? Okay, uh, just real quick at the end here and then I'm gonna be quiet, you guys can do some work. If you uh, remember here, we did two types of, um, two types of questions here today. We did mass by volume. And we did molar concentration. Okay. If uh, you see things like this, determine the percent, the PPT, the PPM. Okay. Those are all things that hopefully will lead you to believe that this is a mass by volume question. Okay. So we want to use probably in this case equivalent fractions. Okay. And I'll just pick a different color here. X. Y, W, Z kind of, we want to compare, we want to cross multiply, we want to solve whatever kind of thing, right? Uh, there, it's kind of a comparison formula, just like I said before, uh, if we were talking about, for example, Charles law, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, same kind of deal here with this, okay? That's what we'd be looking at there. Uh, again, if you see percent PPT, PPM, probably doing this question here, this kind of thing, we're going to compare two things, okay? If it says anything about moles per liter, molar concentration, like for example, what is the molar concentration? Or 5.34 moles per liter, okay? If it says something along that line, then we have to use, of course, C equals N over V. And with that, of course, little m over Big M, more than likely. Not always, but more than likely, yes. Okay, 99% of the time, probably. All right, so that's kind of the two different types of concentrations we have to work with today. Um, so, uh, in that regard there, I think I'll just end it there. Uh, is that okay? Is there any questions about anything? Please let me know.